Greetings to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Welcome to Full of Grace Ministry where you are loved and you are told about love and that love comes from God and then we call upon the name of Jesus that shows that love when he came all the way down and hung upon a cross and there was no greater love than this that a man would lay down his life for his friend. Spring forward or fall back. Spring forward or fall back. How many in our lives uh, of the people down here below on planet Earth uh, um, go forward and then they seem they fall back? Uh, uh, something pulls you back. Uh, you try to do your best to, uh, to go forward in many eras of your life and something pulls you back. Uh, and Way back sometimes. And then we got to go way back uh, forward to even catch up to where we was. Uh, praise God. But how many like to go forward in life? Uh, and when I say forward in life, I'm not saying let's see how much money we can get. Let's see how much prosperity we can get. Let's see if we can get new homes and, and new cars because going forward is laying your treasures up in heaven. That's the forward you want to go toward is going to heaven to meet the mighty God and, uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Forward in success, uh, forward in relationship, forward in prosperity, forward in love, forward, forward in joy, forward in your high calling, uh, uh, forward in success. The only uh, person that I know that gives success is the Lord Jesus Christ. Forward in relationship. The best relationship that you could possibly have is with God your Father. And the only one that I know that would get you close in a good relationship with your Father is the Lord Jesus Christ. Forward in prosperity. Uh, the only one that I know that would uh, give you prosperity is our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how do I know that? Because He went away to prepare you a place in heaven, uh, a mansion. That person's name is Jesus. That's the best prosperity I know if you got a mansion waiting for you up in glory. Uh, forward in peace. Uh, how many know He is your peace uh, that passeth all understanding. Forward in love. How many know He's the best lover that you could possibly have? When He came down from heaven and went to that cross, He said there was no greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Aren't you glad you're his friend? Praise God. Forward in joy. Uh, the best joy I know comes from him. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. He's my joy. Forward in my high calling. And I know my high calling is to make it up there. And my high calling is to proclaim the name of Jesus to get up there. So just keep on going forward in Jesus. Because you find all these things all wrapped up in Him. You find all these things tied up in Jesus. Aren't you tired of falling back? Well, Tracy's going to read some things. And then we're going to just keep on going forward. We're going to get to heaven because we know a man that gets us there. Amen. Uh, you know, spring's coming up, and I always heard this catchy little saying about daylight savings time. We need to save some daylight in our life. Amen. And it was spring forward or fall back. Okay. Uh, we must move forward and press on. Or lest we fall. If we aren't careful, we can slide back, hit a slick spot in the road. I heard a tragic story about a teen who lost her life, hit an oil spot in the road. Pitiful. Her life, she, she had her whole life ahead of her. One doctrine teaches that once saved, always saved. This is a lie. You can fall from grace, and your name can be blotted out of the book of life. See, only the righteous are written into the Lamb's book of life. And uh, it says that your name can be blotted out. Amen. It's just like washing clothes. You've got to take a bath and, and wash your clothes all the time because you can walk outside this house and come back with a black spot on you and not even know where you got it from. Amen. 
Okay, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18, 21 and 24. If, but if the wicked will turn from his sin that he hath committed and keep all the statutes. Now, this is the wicked, if he turns from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live and not die. Amen? If the wicked turns, 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 okay? Now, but if the righteous turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to the abominations, according to the wicked, that the wicked man doeth, shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed, and in that sin that he has sinned, in them he shall die. And I've always heard, as a tree falls, so shall it lay. So we can be blotted out the Lamb's book of life. Because Revelations 21, 27 says, and There shall no wise enter in anything that defileth, neither uh, whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the righteous. Okay, Revelation 3, 5. He that overcome the same shall be clothed in white raiment. There's your clean clothes. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. That means you can be blotted out. Okay? Amen. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So righteous people can be blotted out of the book of life if you sin. My thing is repent and repent often. Uh, if you fall, because the Bible says in First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Use that washing machine, amen, and that bleach. Okay, Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwritings and ordinances which was contrary to us and took it away, nailing it to the cross. That's what he does with a sinner repents. He takes away everything that you have committed in your sin takes that away but if a righteous man falls he takes away his righteousness amen and that is something to think about why is it when on the great judgment day when uh we stand before the lord and and he, and so many will say lord didn't i do this in your name didn't i didn't i do that in your name and them words are spoken depart from me Workers of iniquity. So there is a lot of people that are claiming to be Christians or they wouldn't say, Lord, we're doing this in your name. And he says, depart from me, workers of iniquity. And then you go on to read, he cast them in the lake of fire. So we, when we become a child of God, there's so many things that pulls you back. You can fall back. You can fall back. And uh, if a person really loves you, they want you to go forward. And then they're not going to tell you that God loves you anyhow, no matter what you do. Um, he, you're okay. Uh, because you know when you're doing these terrible things, you're not okay. Deep down, you know you're not okay. So when you uh, went to the uh, altar that one special day and you said, Lord, forgive me of my sins, and He cleansed you, remember, there is things that pulls you back. They pull you back and you fall back into temptation and trouble and deep water and everything. But there's always Jesus that... Um, that will pull you right back up and just go right back where you started and say, Lord Jesus, I made a mistake. Please forgive me of my sins. Don't just sit there and say, well, I accepted you once and uh, now I have a license to sin. I'm okay no matter what I do. If I commit adultery, if I commit fornication, uh, I'm okay to do it. It's not like that. That's turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Read it for yourself. We are saved by grace. Praise the name of God. He loved us to pull us out of them bad situations. But if we get back in them situation, you better run to the grace again. Uh, he saved you from it. Run back to the grace of God again and let Him, uh, if you went back, let Him pull you back out again. Praise God. Um, we are saved by the name of Jesus. Are you tired of falling back? Are you 
tired of falling back into trouble? Are you tired of falling back into deep waters? Are you tired of falling back into hell? Are you tired of falling back into temptation? Are you tired of falling back into sin? Are you tired of falling back in from the truth? Are you tired of falling back and knowing who God is? When you get to know who God is and, and you tasted, uh, uh, seen the great things of God and God's been good to you in your life. And as you learn down here below, you learned who God was and He showed, uh, His face to you one time and, and you found out that, uh, and God, uh, showed His face in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let me tell you a story. I was in the hospital one time. And the doctor said, uh, it was over a situation with my son. He said, do you believe in God? I said, I sure do. Notice, he said, ask me, do I believe in God? Full of grace believes in God. Let me tell you, full of grace believes in God. And he said, well, let's pray. I do not know why I asked this question. It must have been the Spirit dealing with me to ask the question. So I asked the doctor, I said, who is your God? He said, Allah. My friend, any time you are asked the question, do you believe in God or someone speaking of God or even a church is saying God, 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 and you don't know what God they're talking about, you could be in some deep trouble. So I told the doctor, I said, my God, God is Jesus. He said, well, Allah created all things. I said, well, my Bible tells me there was a nothing that was made or created that was not made by Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus, this is how God, God did all things by Christ Jesus. So that's uh, lets me know who my God is. Our Heavenly Father gave us a name. Our Heavenly Father uh, uh, put a name to go by. When we call upon the uh, uh, Father and we call upon God, He given us a name that's above all other names. Uh, uh, in that name of Jesus, uh, He pulls us out of all this falling back. There is a God that keeps you from falling from the truth. There is a God that keeps you falling from sin. And that God wants you to run to the truth. And that God is named Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Him. God, 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 God. You can hear them words many times. You can hear it in the church. Be aware. Beware. We've got to hear the precious name of Jesus. He's our Savior. Now let me go a little further with that. Jesus is your Savior. Do you realize that? You know that. You accept Him as your Savior. So let me go a little bit back, a little bit further. God our Father is a jealous God. You can read it for yourself. It's in the Holy Book. God is a jealous God. Have no other God before Him. Your Father. In, in Genesis... Your father says there's none equal with him. None. None equal with God. God. Deuteronomy. Okay. Now, you know that. He says he is the only Savior. God. The Heavenly Father. The only Savior. So God is jealous. He's the Savior. I mean, no, God is your Savior. God is your Savior. I just asked the question earlier. I mean, no, Jesus is your Savior. Let me tell you something, my friend. Isn't it wonderful to know when you speak of God and, and you know that Jesus is your Savior. It's the same God that said He was jealous. It's the same God that said He was your Savior. Uh, you don't have to worry about making a God jealous if you know God. You, he's not going to be jealous if you know Him. But there's none equal with Him. None is equal with God. So 
when He given us this precious name known as the Son of the living God, He dwelt in that name. He dwelt in that person. He is the very express image of that person. And the, Bi the Holy Bible says, and there's one body and one Lord and one Spirit. So you're looking for the body of God? Uh, Jesus is the body of God. He sits on the right hand of God. Why? You, you can bet that when Jesus sits down, being the body of God, He has a hand. And when He sits down, He's sitting on the right hand of God. In the book of Revelation, there is one that sits upon the throne. Read it for yourself. It's in the book of Revelation. He's in the midst of God. And God is a spirit. But one day, my friend, it's no longer a mystery, He said. We have both now seen and heard Him. Well, praise God. When Jesus came to earth, he, we heard the voice of God. When Jesus came to earth, we seen the face of God. And when you get up into heaven, there's going to be a man sitting up on the throne. There's going to be a body sitting up on the throne. And you're going to see God. And it's, His name is Jesus. It says that man that's sitting on that throne, His name is Jesus. He came in His Father's name. Now let me tell you, when Jesus was down here on earth, He is your way to the Almighty God. He had to speak in parables, He told His disciples. He had to speak in parables when Philip asked Him a question. Lord, show us the Father that it was satisfy us. They wanted to see the Father. How many like to see your Father? I know I would. Jesus, your Savior, said these words to Philip. Have you been with me so long, Philip? You don't know who I am. When you see me, you have seen the Father. Jesus said them words to his disciples. And this one disciple was named Philip. And then he goes on to say, why even ask? Why even ask to see the Father? You've been with me this long and you don't know who I am? Let me tell you um, something, my friend. There's a lot of people even in churches, uh, even doctors, that's been with God so long, so long, and still don't know who He is and still don't know who He is. Uh, uh, Jesus, the mighty God from heaven, says He's the first and He is the last. God your Father said, He is the first and He is the last. Read it for yourself. And, and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ said the same thing. And believe me, He also said these words. He is jealous, have no other God before Him. There is one that sits upon the throne, and His name is Jesus. There is a lot of things pulling us back from this, uh, uh, in this world that gets us in trouble. I have found out if anybody turns you from Jesus in any area of your life, if anybody turns you away from that name, He is turning you away from God. Uh, so in any case, any case He's trying to pull you away from the name of Jesus, He is pulling you away from God. To know God... K-N-O-W is to know Jesus. Know God, N-O, know God is know Jesus. So if you want to get to know God, K-N-O-W, get to know Jesus. He's in the Bible. He will tell you. So many times he had to speak in parables. There is a big warning when Jesus spoke to the church. To the church, my friend. And he told the church in the synagogues, he said, your father is the devil. Your father is the devil. Think about that. We're talking about us. They should was believing in God. But here's Jesus saying their father was the devil. 
get to know Jesus, you get to know God. Then he goes on to say, unless you believe I am He. Talking about God. Talking about God. You can read it for yourself. You will die in your sins. He who? Who, who was Jesus talking about? Yeah. Unless you believe I am He, God, you will die in your sins. I don't want to die in my sins. I want to accept God. And to accept God, I must proclaim the name of Jesus. The only way, the truth and the life, no man go unto the Father but by Him. You cannot bypass Jesus. If you know anybody in your life that's bypassing Jesus and said no, He said if you go up any other way, you're like a thief and a robber. You're like a thief and a robber. You cannot bypass Jesus. He's the way to the God Himself. Knock and seek and He shall be opened. In Him you'll find your Father. And you'll be so glad when you know who your Father is. You will rejoice and you'll be glad in it. He pulls us out of hell. When Jesus died, He went to hell and fought demons. Took the keys out of the hands of Satan unlocked his people and said, let them go. His people. Did you know that if you're a child of God and you belong to Jesus, you are the salt of the earth? I'm talking about Jesus, people. Did you know there is a man coming back one day that has went away to prepare a place for you? His name is Jesus. Did you know that He said He's coming back after His own? Whose own? Jesus' people. He's coming back after His people. Did you know He's your righteousness? He's the one that pulls you uh, from falling back. He gets you back on track. He knows all about you. Did you know when Jesus speaks to you like He spoke to the woman at the well? And told her, she said, I have no husband. And he said, oh, you have said the truth, but you had five. You had five. And he said, and the one you're with now is not yours. What was he talking about? She had five. And the one that she's with now is not hers. Is she, it, was he talking about the man that was in her cabin? Or was he talking about himself? He was, she was standing there talking to Jesus. And the one you are with now is not yours. But he knew all about her. And so she knew, this man knew all about her. Only God knows all things. God knows all things. So she went her way into the city and she said, let me tell you about a man that knows all about me. And Jesus knows all about you. Why? Because He's the great God Almighty in the flesh. I'm known as the Son of the living God that can see and know all about you. He told Peter, Do you love me, Peter? And then, then He told Peter, Go and feed my sheep. Go and feed my sheep. Jesus, Jesus wanted Peter to feed His sheep. Jesus, Asked Peter, did he love him? Peter said, you know that I do. But when they captured Jesus, Peter denied his Lord three times. We're talking about Jesus. How many of us has denied Jesus in so many different eras of our life? We deny who he is. We deny his name, his power, his authority of who he is. The Almighty God. How many has denied that He was the Almighty God? Peter denied his Lord three times. What Lord? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So when he was converted, strengthen the brethren. The Bible said when he told Peter, if when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. Amen? 
So Peter went on. And he felt, he felt so bad. He denied his Lord. He told Jesus his mother. He denied the Lord, my God. Let's don't deny Jesus who he is. But when he got himself together and he proclaimed this mighty name, Jesus, Peter went on and preached uh, and he baptized in the name of Jesus. And when he carried on in that name, what happened? That he was given the keys of heaven. And also, uh, when Peter carried on in that name, people got healed. Uh, because Peter said, silver and gold, I have none, but such as I have, I I give unto you. My friend, if you want to give somebody something that's worth anything, you give them Jesus. You give them the Lord Jesus. Because when you give them Jesus, you are telling them there is a Father of up above. There is a Father that so loved us that He gave. There is a Father that's out there in the universe. There is a God out there. Let's get to know Him. And Peter uh, proclaim the mighty God's name in this name, such as I have, I give unto you. Praise the name of our living God. We must turn from all the things that us are causing us to go backwards. Going backwards. Jesus wanted the church to go forward. He went to the church, my friend, and they denied Him and crucified Him. To the church of all people. Think about it, my friend. You can, uh, you can think going to sinners that they would crucify Him, but it, wasn't a, it was not sinners. It was the church crucified our Lord. The synagogue that he taught in. Think about it. How many churches today is still denying him? So from Full of Grace Ministry, be aware when you hear God, God, God. Be aware even if you hear a person believes in one God. And they don't tell you who that one God is. They'll tell you, oh, there's one God, one God, one God. Just like the doctor said, do you believe in God? Ask them the God's name. There was a name came down that was, it said, and he shall be called the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the mighty God. There's only one mighty God. You know, in Genesis, God was an invisible spirit. Okay, and he moved on the face of the waters and on the deep. And then he created himself a body from a woman, which is called a son. And God came down in that son. And on the cross, Jesus gave up the ghost. And listen, a lot of people don't want to say ghost. They want to say spirit, spirit, spirit. Let me tell you, look in Webster's Dictionary. There's a difference between a spirit, a spirit of a person and a ghost of a person. Okay, a spirit is a, in a person while they're alive and remaineth alive. And a ghost of a person is a spirit remaining after death. So if you're denying the Holy Ghost, you're denying the death of the Lord Jesus Christ because He gave up the ghost on uh, the cross. He is the Holy Ghost that He shed forth for us. Amen? We have a tavern here where we live at in this town. And it's called the Spirit's. The spirit shop. The spirit shop. So see, a spirit can be many things. Um, uh, it could be things and objects, a, a spirit of something. Uh, so in this case, it's called the spirit shop, which you go and get your liquor, and you get the spirits within you. My friend, on the day of Pentecost, Jesus went away and said, wait up on that promise. Uh, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that Holy Ghost, and when He died upon the cross, He gave up the ghost. Read it for yourself. He gave up the ghost. Uh, and praise God. And your Jesus told you, He will never leave you nor forsake you, but go all the way even unto the end of the earth. Look around. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. 
But he said, wait upon that promise. The Holy Ghost. And they waited upon that promise. Uh, read it for yourself. And then he goes on and say, I will come unto you. He told who the Holy Ghost was. He said, I will come unto you. So the Spirit remaining after death, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost is Jesus. This Holy Ghost is the same jealous God that have no other God before Him. This same Holy Ghost is the only Savior of the world. This Holy Ghost will lead you to a name named Jesus. The name that God our Father has given us to be saved by. One name under heaven whereby man can be saved. So run to your Father and run to your Son and run to the Holy Ghost and call upon the one name given unto heaven whereby man can can be saved. That name is Jesus. I want to say something. When he was, why didn't he just finish it right there on the cross? What happened was he gave up the ghost on the cross, but he had a work to do. He had to go down and set the captives free in hell. So he wasn't yet glorified. He had to set them free and take the keys. And so that's why he said, wait. He had to go be glorified. But it was the same ghost. It was a ghost of Jesus, a spirit of a person remaining after death. Amen. Remaining after death. So that's why Jesus never left us nor forsake us. Because you look around, where is Jesus? Do you know the Holy Ghost? Do you know that Spirit? Do you know that name? And did you know that name never left you? Because the Holy Ghost speaks of the truth of Him, of Jesus. He's the truth. My friend, I want you to go forward. I want you to go forward in knowing who God is. There's one true, living, jealous, and only Savior, God. He's your Father. You accept Him as your Father. And there's only one name that's given that God wanted us to go by. And that was the name of His Jesus that's known as the Son of the living God. You'll find God right there in that name. So when you hear someone say, God, 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 be aware. I, I have experienced it. They're not always talking about the same God, my friend. They're not always talking about the same God. They can gather around in circles and they can pray and pray and pray. But whatsoever you do in word or deed, word or deed, anything you do, do all in the name of Jesus. It's in the book. It's in the book. Whatsoever you do, anything you do, in word, anything you say, or in deed, anything that you're doing in deed, do it in the name of Jesus. He, he told us to. He told us to. This one jealous God that sits alone upon the throne told us to do it. No wonder the disciples did it. No wonder they did everything in that name. Did you know that there was people that was filled with the gift of speaking in tongues that wasn't even of the faith? And when I say of faith, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus they got the gift and they asked this question. Well, what do we do with these men that's speaking in tongues and has not yet been baptized as we have? And the, that question was asked to the disciples. And then they said, well, go and rebaptize them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they got this gift because they knew if it was the real gift, if it was the real tongues, they should want to, it's up to them, to run to the one name that's given. And so you can read it for yourself, and they had to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus. Now, that's not my words because I don't care. I don't, I would not care whatsoever. But my ways are not God's ways. My ways are not God's ways. I don't care. 
But for some reason, in the Holy Bible, they wanted them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. They asked them what were they baptized under, and they said under John's baptisms, unto repentance. And they said, well, you need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though they already received the gift of the Holy Ghost. They need to be re-baptized. Amen? And so that's why in the book of Acts it says, uh, what shall we do to be saved? They said, every one of you must repent and be baptized in the name of, of the Lord Jesus Christ for the, of for the remission of your sins, and then you shall receive the gift. There is a gift that comes with being baptized in the name of Jesus. And that gift was speaking in other tongues. I want to say a lot of people think it's Jesus uh, only, uh, the apostolics. But it's not. They believe in a Father. We believe in a Father, Son, and a Holy Ghost. But we believe it like the Bible says, that it's all in Jesus. He's the fullness of the Godhead. He was Father in creation, Son in redemption, and Holy Ghost in regeneration. And so, uh, and exactly like the Bible says, yes, there's a Father, there's a Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it's all in Jesus. Amen. Preach and teach in that name. Do everything in that name. We are the people of Jesus' name. Name. Amen. So we must follow, follow this one God, this one God of the universe, the Father. We must follow Him. And according to the Bible, the only way you follow Him is to follow Jesus Christ. Not another God. Lord, have mercy, not another God. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he has always been there. He's the first and He is the last. Your Father is. Uh, and then Jesus proclaimed the same thing. He's the first and He is the last. Uh, so, uh, you know who the one God is. He has a name. And uh, he, his, he was known as the Son of the living God when He came to earth. And Jesus came in His Father's name. And I and my Father are one. Not as one. They are one. Uh, they're not as one like me and Trish. You see two persons here. There's two persons right here. But if you read your Word of God, there's one body. One body, one Lord, one faith, and one Spirit. Uh, and so you're not going to see uh, like one as me and Trish are one. No, it don't say that. They are one. Me and Trish are not one. We are as one, but not are one. Uh, so you're not going to see a body and a body and a body. It's not like that. God is a spirit, and them that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. Uh, God is a, a, a invisible spirit. So you're not going to see with your eyes this invisible spirit but now let me tell you something in the bible it tells us how we did see this invisible spirit um jesus himself uh they said now we have heard and we have seen him our great god and savior we have heard and seen him how did they hear the great god and savior and seen him it was jesus they seen their great God and Savior. So when you get up in heaven and you see Jesus there and on Judgment Day, don't be like Philip and say, Philip, where is the Father? Philip, where is the Father? I want to see the Father. Because wouldn't it be awful if Jesus looked at you and said the same words like He did Philip? Have you been with me this long and you don't even know who I am? Praise God, I am that I am. Praise God, I am that I am. I'm going to be like Thomas. I'm going to bow down and say, my Lord and my God. And I'm going to see the nail scars in his hands and in his feet. Amen? It's wonderful to know the one true living God. And when anybody starts teaching and preaching on the one God, there's going to be a name with that one God. And even if they tell you that name is Jehovah, uh, they're still going to have to say it's Jesus because the name Jehovah means Jesus Savior. The name of Jehovah means Jesus Savior. Jesus came in His Father's name. God is an invisible spirit, but He's no longer visible. 
we see Him in His Son. His Son, the Son of God, is now God in the flesh. The Almighty Father in the flesh, the Son of God is. Praise God. Uh, so we bring all this up because there is things that will pull you back. Uh, there's things that pull you back from knowing God. There's things that will pull you back in going back into sin. Uh, uh, even the church can be in sin if they don't know who he is who He is. And Jesus said, there, your father is the devil. Uh, unless you believe I am He, you will die in your sins. Uh, I believe that He is God. I believe He's the Almighty God. And I believe that God Himself gave us a name that we won't go back into trouble. We won't get into sin. We won't do sacrifices that don't mean a thing because God Himself became our sacrifice. And He done that in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Go forward in success. Go forward in your relationship with God. Go forward in prosperity. Jesus went away to prepare a mansion for you. Go forward in peace. And go forward in love. And go forward in joy. And go forward in your high calling. Jesus has a work for you. Jesus has a work for you. Be His disciples. Lead people to God. And, and when you lead them to God, tell them, tell them, tell them, Jesus is the only way to Him. Jesus is the only way. I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you and so does God. He came to earth and died in a man named Jesus and rose again because death couldn't hold him back because he was God. Praise Amen. God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, this we know is Jesus. Amen.